how does Google decide which search results to show you? How does Amazon choose which products to recommend? How does Netflix pick movies for you? And Spotify pick songs? How does Facebook choose which updates to show you? And Twitter which tweets? The answer to all these questions is the same. Machine learning. Hmm? Machine learning is the I most important technology in the world today. And yet most people are only dimly aware of it, if at all. This urgently needs to change because whoever controls machine learning controls the future. You need to control what machines are learning about you. Or your life will increasingly be run by the likes of Google, Amazon and Facebook. And you may or may not like the results. And the first step in taking control is understanding what machine learning is and what it does. In the first stage of the information age, computers had to be programmed by us. They did all sorts of amazing things from running a factory and you know, managing payroll to playing chess and making Pixar movies. But in each case, someone had to explain to the computer what to do in painstaking detail. A programmer had to write down an algorithm with step-by-step -step instructions to accomplish the desired task. This was very slow and very expensive, and it limited the rate of progress. But in the second stage of the information age, which we are now entering, we no longer have to program computers, because they figure out by themselves what to do by learning from data. Computers program themselves. That's what machine learning is. Computers programming themselves. The automation of automation. Google's computers look at which search results you clicked on in the past and figure out which ones you will click on in the future. Netflix looks at which movies you liked and predicts which other movies you like. And as the data we generate grows exponentially, Computers become smarter and smarter with no extra work from us. Machine learning is a revolution that's going to change how we live, work, and play. And it's just getting started. It's not just online either. The smartphone in your pocket right now is learning about you. It uses machine learning to understand what you say, to correct your typos, to predict what you're going to do next and make suggestions. It learns your habitual routes from GPS and whether you tend to be late for meetings by comparing it with your calendar. It can even learn how you walk from its accelerometer. One of these days, your smartphone is going to warn you and call 911 if it thinks you're about to have a heart attack. So machine learning could save your life. Self-driving cars wouldn't be possible without machine learning. We actually don't know how to program cars to drive themselves. They learn by watching people drive. Investment firms use machine learning to predict which, th which stocks will go up or down. Companies use learning algorithms to select job applicants, so you may owe your job, current or future, to a learning algorithm. These days, a third of all marriages start online, and the matchmakers are learning algorithms, picking potential dates for people based on their profiles. So there are children alive today who wouldn't have been born if not for machine learning. But if you ask their parents, you know, how did the dating site pair them up out of all the millions of couples that it could have chosen, they'll have no idea. I'm a machine learning researcher. I invent learning algorithms for a living, and I've been doing it for 20 years. But something is different now. Knowledge of machine learning no longer belongs just in the lab. There's too much at stake. If machine learning can determine our fates, individually and collectively, then we all need to have a handle on it. It's like driving a car. Only engineers and mechanics need to know how the engine works. But everyone needs to understand where the steering wheel and pedals are and how to use them. So here's machine learning in a nutshell. At heart, a learning algorithm is just a computer scientist. Not a scientist who studies computers like me, but a computer doing science. 
The computer looks at data, formulates hypotheses to explain it, tests those hypotheses against more data, refines them or discards them, and so on, until it's confident that it has a good theory of the phenomenon that it's studying, whether it's the workings of a living cell or people's tastes in music. Machine learning is really just the scientific method that work, except it's being carried out by computers instead of by human scientists. Now, learning algorithms are not yet as smart as human scientists, of course. But on the other hand, they can look at vastly more data and discover orders of magnitude more knowledge, orders of magnitude faster than any human scientist ever could. Machine learning is the scientific method on steroids. There's a new source of knowledge on Earth, computers learning from data. And soon, the knowledge from this new source will dwarf the knowledge that scientists accumulated over centuries and that the whole human race accumulated over millennia. A learning algorithm is different from a traditional learning algorithm in one essential way. With a traditional learning algorithm, you need a different algorithm for each different thing you want the computer to do. If you want the computer to play chess, you have to program it to play chess. If you want the computer to do medical diagnosis, you have to program it to do medical diagnosis. But a single learning algorithm can do an infinite variety of different things, depending on the data that it learns from. If the data is chess games, it learns to play chess. If the data is patient records and the corresponding diagnosis, it learns to make those diagnoses. This is extraordinarily powerful. A machine learning algorithm can be very simple, and yet it can accomplish very complex things, even things that we don't know how to program a computer to do, like driving a car. A learning algorithm is a master algorithm. It makes other algorithms. And the holy grail of machine learning researchers is to invent the ultimate algorithm, one that is capable of learning anything from data. We've been pursuing this goal for several decades now, and we're getting pretty close. There are five main paradigms in machine learning. Each one of them is inspired by ideas from a different field. Evolution, neuroscience, psychology, philosophy, statistics. Each one of them is fascinating in its own right, so let's see what they're all about. The most obvious way to create a universal learning algorithm is to emulate the one inside your skull. Everything you know, everything you've ever learned is encoded in the connections between the neurons in your brain. Connectionists, as they're called, design learning algorithms based on this idea. Their leader is Jeff Hinton, a psychologist turned computer scientist who splits his time between Google and the University of Toronto. He believes that the way our brain learns can be captured by a single learning algorithm, and he spent the last 40 years trying to discover it. In fact, he tells the story of coming home from work one day very excited, saying, I did it, I figured out how the brain works. And his daughter replied, oh, dad, not again. <laughs> but after many ups and downs, his quest is starting to pay off. Backpropagation, a brain-inspired learning algorithm that he co-invented, is taking the world by storm. Rebranded as deep learning, it's used by the likes of Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft to do everything from recognizing images and speech to choosing ads and, uh, and, you know, and search results to show you. DeepMind, a startup that Google paid over half a billion dollars for, is essentially a backpropagation shop. Backpropagation is a remarkably simple algorithm. In essence, it just consists of repeatedly strengthening or weakening the connection between each pair of neurons in order to improve the, the accuracy of the predictions of the algorithm. The most optimistic of the connectionists believe that backprop is the master algorithm, a single learning algorithm that will be capable of learning anything and therefore of ultimately automating all knowledge discovery. But the more sober ones admit that backprop is still a far cry from the master algorithm. And the other machine learning camps have very different ideas on how to get there. 
Take the evolutionaries. They were led by John Holland from the University of Michigan until his death in August of last year. They believe that evolution, not the brain, is the master algorithm. Backprop may be useful fi for fine-tuning the connections between your neurons, but evolution made the brain itself, not to mention all life on Earth. Holland started out in the 60s it, you know, simulating evolution on a computer, complete with populations of competing individuals, fitness scores, sexual reproduction between uh, the fittest individuals, the whole thing. By the mid-90s, his, fo his followers had succeeded in evolving devices like radios and amplifiers, starting with random piles of parts. And along, along the way, they amassed an impressive pile of patents. These days, they're busy evolving real hardware robots, with the fittest individuals in each generation programming 3D printers to produce the next one. So if Terminator ever comes to pass, this may well be how it happens. Now, most machine learning researchers think that imitating biology, whether it's evolution or the brain, is at best a very circuitous path to the master algorithm. Better to solve the problem from first principles, using what we know from computer science, logic, and statistics. Bayesians believe that the master algorithm is Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem is a mat mathematical rule for updating our degree of belief in a hypothesis when we see new evidence. As we see more data, the hypotheses that are consistent with it become more likely, and the ones that are inconsistent become less likely, until hopefully there's a clear winner. Bayesians are the most fanatical of the five machine learning tribes. Until recently, they were a persecuted minority in statistics, but these days they're on the ascendant. Bayesians believe that if a learning algorithm is not consistent with Bayes' theorem, then it must be wrong. But Bayesian learning is computationally very expensive, and it didn't really take off until Huda Pearl, a professor at UCLA, made the breakthrough for which he received the Turing Award, the Nobel Prize of Computer Science in 2011. Pearl invented what are called Bayesian networks, a type of model that can very efficiently encode the interactions between thousands or millions of variables. Your first self-driving car will probably have a Bayesian network inside it. Now, for the symbolists, the machine learning camp that is closest to classic knowledge-based AI, Bayesian networks are still not powerful enough. Symbolists like Imperial College's Steve Muggleton believe that a truly general-purpose learning algorithm has to be able to freely combine rules. And they discover those rules by filling in the gaps in deductive reasoning. If I know that Socrates is human, what else do I need to know to infer that he's mortal? That humans are mortal, of course. And now I can add this newly discovered rule to my knowledge base. Eve is a, is a robot scientist at the University of Manchester that works on this principle. Starting with basic knowledge of molecular biology, Eve formulates hypotheses, runs lab experiments to test them, and so on all without human help. In 2014, Eve discovered the new malaria drug. And now we can make millions more like Eve and have millions of scientists working on progressing the state of our knowledge. Now, where the algorithms of the symbolists emulate the thought processes of a scientist, the algorithms of the analogizers, the fifth and last major machine learning tribe, are more like a lazy child that doesn't study for the exam and then improvises the answers. When faced with a new patient to diagnose, analogy-based learners, what they do is they just find the patient in their files with the most similar symptoms, and they assume that the diagnosis will be the same. Now, this may seem very naive, but analogizers have a mathematical proof that it can learn anything given enough data. So your mom taught you that procrastination is bad, but in machine learning, it can actually be quite powerful. Douglas Hofstadter, the author of Gödel Escherbach, is a famous analogizer, and he has no doubt that analogy is the master algorithm. Whether or not that's the case, learning by analogy has already proved its chops in the ubiquitous recommender systems 
that recommend products you might want to buy based on the ones you bought before. So who will win the race to invent the ultimate learning algorithm? With all the major tech companies pouring resources into it, it's hard to predict. But maybe none of the tribes has all the pieces of the puzzle. And what it'll take is a combination of ideas from all of them. A grand unified theory of machine learning akin to the standard model of physics or the central dogma of biology. Or maybe it'll take an entirely new insight, which could well come not from a professional researcher, but from an outsider or from a student in a dorm room like Jeff Hinton was when he started out on his quest. So if you have such an insight, please let me know so I can publish it. <laughs> Either way, the next decade is going to be one of accelerating change. Today, each company has a little model of you based on just the sliver of your data that it has access to. Netflix has a model to predict your movie tastes based on your movie ratings. Amazon has a model to predict what you're going to buy based on what you've done on their site, and so on. But all these little models are quickly coalescing into bigger and bigger ones. And soon, you'll have a complete 360-degree model of you that learns from all your data and assists you with everything that you do in your life, from buying things and making appointments to finding a job or a mate. Our digital alter egos will be even more indispensable to us than our smartphones. And the world economy will revolve around them. Our society will become a society of models. Everyone's models will be continually collaborating, competing, negotiating in cyberspace to determine what that happens in the real world. You click on the Find Me a Job button on LinkedIn, and your model instantly interviews for all the open positions that match your specs. At the same time, another copy of your model can be looking for a car for you, exhaustively researching all the options and haggling with the car dealer bot so you don't have to. If you're looking for a date, your model will go on millions of dates with thousands of other people's models and select the most promising ones to try out in the real world. But your data and your model have to be under your control, not owned by some third party that may have a conflict of interest. Sergey Brin says that Google wants to be the third half of your brain. But do you really want part of your brain constantly trying to show you ads? Probably not. <laughs> we need something different, maybe something like data banks that store your data and use it on your behalf in the same way that regular banks store and invest your money. Or maybe we need data unions to even the balance of power between us and large companies in the same way that labor unions even the balance of power between workers and their bosses. And you need to be able to interact with your model, setting its goals, asking it to justify its suggestions, telling it where it went wrong and why all very different from the black boxes that we have today. And finally, as a society, we're going to have to decide what kind of society of models we want to have. What's allowed? What's not? How do we make sure that everyone benefits? How do we smooth the transition? There is lots to figure out. If we do, there's a bright future where our lives will be happier and more productive. If we don't, it'll be a huge missed opportunity. It's in our hands. Thank you. <laughs>